Okay, guys, I'm here today with Greg Melita. Huge honor for me. Guys, Greg is the host of the Jiu Jitsu Motivation podcast, and he also owns a Jiu Jitsu school in the Hamptons, so the Hamptons Jiu Jitsu. And uh, he's just shooting one instructional video here that's very, very interesting, which is going to be called What, what I Wish I Knew When I Was a White Belt, right, that's Greg? That's it. And today he's going to show us here one of his favorite moves, which is a better way to do the cross collar choke. So I think cross collar choke it's a technique that everybody learns when they are white belt, and he's gonna show us here a way to improve your cross collar cross collar choke. So let's do it, Greg. So if I have my partner on his knees, just as an example, right? We could even start on both of our knees. This is a great drill that you can do uh, day one with a student. You want to teach them the concept that the collar is is a rope, right? And you gotta be able to know when to make no slack and create slack, right? So if I enter, the important grip is that first hand, right? I want to get this first hand all the way to the tag, okay? But the second hand, a lot of people have problem entering because the first hand is pulling too tight. It makes this so tight to get the grip in. So I have to treat this, if this is pulling and making this too tight, then I gotta push it and look at all the slack. I just created it. All right, Jim. No, that makes a lot of sense. So if I'm here, I enter the first hand and now everybody's trying to get the second hand in, it's tough. I punch this to the back and look, loosens the whole thing up and then I can enter into a choke. Yeah, and uh, can you also talk about the concept of having my head underneath your head? Yeah, that was so a great concept. I think uh, a lot of people, um, you guys owe it to yourself to look into some of the, the history of some of the legends in the sport. Yep. Yep. And uh, one of them is uh, Fernando Margarita uh, Pontes, um, just a huge influence in my early game. And uh, when I noticed he was doing these collar chokes, one of the concepts was he's creating slack and not creating slack. The other one is, it's all about your partner's head alignment with yours, okay? So in other words, I think in even like a cross, um, regular cross collar, butterfly, closed guard, you get your grips. Now we talked about the concept of slack and it comes in. But I think from here, a lot of people just think it's, and it's, it's all technique, but they think either ear to ear or elbows to the chest and, and stretch and expand the chest. But what are they doing when they do that? I want your head below my head. Look, look. Man, that's incredible. If oh. I just think getting my partner's head below mine, I mean, look at a legend like Haja. Yeah. How yeah. deadly is Haja's mounted cross choke? Yeah. So you always want to keep your opponent's head underneath your head. Underneath. Oh, yeah. just, and I think that really helped me. Just simple concepts yeah. enable you to get advanced. Um, so like in the example of the mounted choke, instead of getting the collar, and it looks same concept. If I get the collar and I pull here, it's gonna be hard to find this if I punch it and then I start to swim. Good. And I can find that, I can play with that. Once I get this, it's not, I mean, I can grapevine and go here, or it's not ear to ear. It's thinking, use my weight, use my body weight, and get my head above my partner's head and weight. Yeah, well, Greg, what fascinates me about Jiu Jitsu is exactly this. Like, I have seen this choke at least like 1,000 times in my life. But I had never thought about this concept about keeping the head underneath the head, you know, like mm -hmm. and it makes a lot of sense now that you're saying, you know, like and that, that just translates to I mean a lot of things that you do. Yeah. Okay, and another interesting fact here that I'm noticing is that for example, this instruction is all about what I wish I know when I was a white belt. And sounds like you, you told me you got your black or uh, blue belt in two thousand one. So probably two thousand you were white belt, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sounds like you got really inspired when you were a white belt because you were showing technique from Margarita and he was like ninety nine, two thousand kind yep. of BJ Pam. So sounds like your white belt was a time on your career where you really inspire yourself and develop a lot of stuff that you still use nowadays. Yeah, I mean think about anybody that either owns an academy, you have a new student start. When are their eyes lighting up when they're first learning? Oh, when they oh, first start oh. in the first few I months. remember my first class. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like I think that it's important to curate a new student when they're like a sponge right away with simple concepts. Yeah, no, I, I really like it. Yeah, so guys, Greg just shot this entire structure all about what what I wish I knew when I was a white belt. And uh, as you can see, like he just demonstrated one of the techniques here, and it was really, really cool. So it's going to be at bjjfanatics.com very soon. Maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So make sure to check that out. And yeah, thanks so much, Greg. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. you. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed.
BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jiu-jitsu faster. 